Something subtle is shifting inside Samsung's lineup, and most people won't notice it at first glance. A small design decision, a quiet supplier change, a camera upgrade hiding in plain sight. But when you connect these dots, it reveals a much bigger plan, one that could quietly reshape Samsung's mid-range phones in 2026 and beyond. Stick with me, because this story goes deeper than specs. Welcome back viewers, Sam here, like, share, and subscribe for more. Samsung didn't tease this at an event. There was no dramatic reveal slide or flashy promo video. Instead, it surfaced through leaks, supply, chain whispers, and small design clues that only start to make sense when you zoom out. The Galaxy S26 series, the Galaxy A57, even the more affordable A37, all of them could soon share a design detail that used to be reserved for premium foldables. A raised camera plateau. One unified camera island instead of individual rings. Cleaner, safer for lenses, slightly more wobble on a table, and a very intentional visual signal. Samsung is quietly standardizing how its phones look and feel. And then there's the Galaxy A37, which might be the sleeper hit nobody saw coming. Leaks suggest a main camera sensor measuring 1156 inches. That's enormous for this segment. Bigger than the Pixel 9a sensor bigger than the iPhone 16s. For a phone that's not supposed to steal headlines, that's a bold move hiding behind a modest name. It's the kind of upgrade that doesn't scream for attention but completely changes everyday photos. Now shift your focus to the Galaxy A57, because this is where Samsung's real strategy starts to show. On the surface, it looks familiar. A clean glass back, a flat display, nothing radical. But underneath, Samsung is making a move it almost never makes. For the first time in the A5X line, Samsung is expected to use flexible OLED panels, sourced not just from Samsung Display, but also from TCL CSOT. That single change explains a lot. Flexible OLED isn't just a technical term, it's what allows thinner, more symmetrical bezels. It's what makes a phone feel more premium the moment you turn the screen on. Chinese brands have been using this tech in phones that cost a fraction of the A57's price, and Samsung has been under pressure to catch up without pushing prices higher. The solution? Bring in a second supplier willing to offer aggressive pricing, while still keeping Samsung display in the mix for volume, quietly smart, very calculated. The display itself isn't trying to shock you. Flat, smooth 128s, reliable in, display fingerprint scanner. No unnecessary experiments. Samsung isn't trying to wow you here. They're trying to remove friction. To make sure nothing about the phone feels cheap anymore, even if nothing feels risky. That same philosophy carries into the cameras. The A57 is expected to pack a 50 megapixel main sensor with optical stabilization, likely from Sony or Samsung itself, paired with a 13 megapixel ultrawide and a 5 megapixel macro that exists mostly because spec sheets expect it. Selfies jump to 12 megapixels, video tops out at 4K 30, solid, dependable, and very intentionally incomplete. No telephoto lens, because the moment Samsung adds that, the invisible wall between the A series and higher tiers starts to crack. Battery, familiar story, around 5,000 mime, charging that won't win races but won't age poorly either, no risky new chemistry. Samsung is choosing stability over spectacle. Betting that consistency keeps millions of users happy long after launch day hype fades. But performance is where things quietly get interesting. The Galaxy A57 is rumored to debut the Exynos 1680, and this isn't just another minor bump. Early chatter points to a serious GPU improvement thanks to AMD's RDNA graphics architecture, the same DNA Samsung uses in its flagships. That means smoother gaming, better long-term efficiency, and fewer performance drops over time. Samsung isn't chasing benchmark screenshots. They're optimizing for how the phone feels six months later. And when you step back, the pattern becomes obvious. Samsung is tightening its lineup, cleaner designs, shared visual language, careful upgrades that never step on higher end models. The A57 isn't here to excite power users. It's here to reassure everyone else. It's the phone you buy because nothing about it feels like a compromise anymore, even if nothing feels wildly new. So here's the real question, and I want you to think about this honestly. Do you want Samsung to keep playing it safe with polished, dependable mid, range phones? Or is it time for the A series to take real risks again? 
Scroll down, drop your take in the comments, and read what others are saying. This debate is getting interesting. If you enjoyed this kind of deep, no, hype breakdown, hit like, share it with a tech-obsessed friend, and subscribe for more. I'll catch you in the next one.